Just on the forest side of the Ganga lies the remains of an ashram that was well known in the late 60s. The ashram of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who developed the well-known meditation techniques called Transcendental Meditation or TM. The ashram was also popularly called the Beatles Ashram because the Beatles, who at the time were the most famous pop group in the world, had become followers of the yogi. The presence of the young musicians brought much publicity to the yogi and to Rishikesh. The Maharishi leased the land from the government on a 20-year contract and built the most beautiful ashram there. A brilliant European architect was said to have designed and constructed some of the most innovative, harmonious and stunning buildings to be seen in India at the time. And in its day, a spiritual haven where truth seekers and social revolutionaries came together to envision a world pervaded by peace and global brotherhood. But alas, it was not to last. The expected second lease was not granted and the ashram was forced to close. The dream had somehow ended abruptly. As human life leaked away from the ashram, nature moved in quickly, reclaiming the site. It is said that wild tigers and elephants were regularly seen on the grounds. The gates were finally closed. Years would slip by. It retains a, a, a strange beauty, a kind of eerie beauty, you see. And here when we can look back in time at glimpses where we see the Maharshi and his devotees so full of joy and cheer and the promise of a, a very flowering spiritual future. And it is a real lesson for all seekers of truth that that which is phenomenal will change but the truth endures and, and continues to flow. In March 2017, as part of the Rishikesh Arts and Film Festival, the government invited Muji Baba to conduct a satsang event at the old site. And now we're a new, we're the new wave, we're the fresh wave of the human experience and we've come, we've come invited by the same government to conduct a satsang here. Yeah. We assessed a particular building, which is, uh, that we said that was the original building in which satsangs were taking place there, and um, that we would use that building. We take it as an honor to be in this place where so much life was once expressed. A new generation of seekers have come and we're sitting together today, not to reminisce, but to represent the truth again. And truth, ever fresh and alive, has come in a new voice to, to call us home.
Namaste and welcome everyone to Satsang here at the beautiful ashram of uh, Venerable Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And um, I would like to also welcome all those who will be joining us via broadcasting and um, to say that we are um, very, very happy to have had this invitation extended to us. It came completely out of the blue, uh, to which I have to thank um, Pradi, who is the uh, executive uh, director of the Rish- Rishikesh Arts and Film um, Festival. They were the ones, along with the uh, Raju, the forest ranger, who is taking care of this place since some time. They approached us and asked, if we, uh, as an invitation from the government, if we would come and uh, hold satsang here. Now, we've been coming to Rishikesh for quite some time. My first time was in 1993. And uh, until a few days ago, uh, I've never been here in this place. We heard about it. In fact, from where we are staying on the other side of Ganga, we could see little hints of this place, heard about it, but only recently had the privilege to come and to see it, uh, you know, in presence, so to speak. And uh, walking through and being really where we are chaperoned through the entire um, space uh, to look at it and knowing its history and that uh, for over maybe 16 years or so uh, nothing has really been happening here in terms of any human activity particularly. Uh, We've heard that uh, and I was shown that there were even a family of tigers uh, living on the land. Mm -mm. And occasionally elephants were seen here, and it uh, it appears as though that the um, the forest ranger, uh, in, uh, acting on behalf of the government, wanted to keep this uh, sort of natural feeling here for some time to look after the place uh, in that way. But not I don't know what is the plans for this, but we feel very very happy that in this very hall, the Marishi was uh, offering satsangs. In this very hall, we came to hear that uh, uh, it's, it, be, it became famous in the West as the Beakles Ashram. It is uh, Sri Mahashi's Ashram. But uh, the Beakles have come and sat somewhere where you're sitting and have listened to the discourses of the Mahashi, and uh, somehow much of that is documented. And now, years later, we're sitting here today. And uh, for some people, it may even be a very living nostalgia. There may be some people here who actually sat in this place and who were themselves uh, participating and practicing the transcendental meditation. I don't know of that. And uh, certainly, there are people who can remember the era in which uh, the activities that were um, taking place here in the form of meditation. It was the birthplace of that and spread around the world. So I'm very happy that uh, we are here today for satsang. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And very, very nice to see you. Actually from here, it looks fantastic with all of you sitting there. I was just taking a moment just to feast my eyes on you. And this lovely light drifting in and so on. You know, uh, I don't know where it's coming from. So, but we are not here for nostalgia. We are here for freedom. And so I'm opening up this room today to see if I see some hands going up already. So, where will we start now? Can I, can I start with you in the red there? You can come from it. <coughs> I put my head 
in the tiger's mouth. You put your head in? The tiger's mouth. The tiger's mouth. <laughs> That's no escape if you put your head in a tiger's mouth. You're not going to uh, recover. It takes someone who is really totally, totally uh, surrendered to say something like that. that I, I put my head in the tiger's mouth. You don't say, I put my head at the tiger's feet or by the tail, in the mouth itself, which means that uh, you're totally, I read it in this way, that you're totally here for um, completion of your sadhana. And, uh, hmm. If there is some more to go, to, 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 to really interact with you further, you have to give me more, or I simply will say to you, it is accepted, and we see how, how things roll. If you have a specific question or something, or you feel just in surrendering, say, I put my head in the tiger's mouth, hmm? which means then, uh, we don't want to hear anything more from you, you are finished. The rest is the tiger's business. You can't be talking to the tiger in the tiger's mouth. You know, the tiger, little tiger. <laughs> Close your mouth whenever you please. No, you have to keep quiet and just leave it there. Thank you, Guruji. Very good. Okay. Okay. Who is it? Yeah. You, you come for a moment. So. China. Yeah. Ah. Is it working? Ah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Namaste, Guruji. I'm Namaste. very happy to see you here again. Same, 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 same. Yes, um, I've been, uh, as you say, a mixture of uh, presen presence and person for some time, for quite some time. <laughs> and uh, I feel I need your help to, to become fully a presence. And I want you to guide me on this. Yes, yes, yes. So, obviously, already, the ability is there to perceive uh, or to have a sense of the measure of where you have, uh, what you have attained so far. You say, I can see that right now uh, my life is a mixture of person and presence. So, just to bring everyone in, what is meant by this? No? Um, uh, largely, the human community, the human kingdom, uh, rare it is that a human being, uh, which is a form of consciousness, the, the, the form of consciousness called human being, you know, is really um, fully aware of itself, fully aware of, of who he is, where he comes from, what is his true nature. Because as, uh, as soon as uh, the form came and we, the consciousness entered the form, you know, and began to experience in the form, uh, it became under very intense conditioning to compel the consciousness to identify with the form, to take the form to be itself. And once that has happened, then other conditioning can come in much more easily. You see? So that was the first formed, the idea. First, the sense, I am, and the, the instrument through which the I am, which is consciousness, is experiencing or functioning in this, in this instrument. And uh, the instrument, we all know, is uh, susceptible to uh, lots of change. It's growing, it's a living, uh, organic uh, instrument. And that's, but it is not a thinker. The body does not think but it registers thought. And the body, we you know, is uh, mm, subject to pains and pleasures, also to, to, to sickness, to, to ultimately with what we call death and decay and so on. So we know that this is a time body. So when consciousness identifies with the time body, it believes it is also destined by time. First mistake also. Consciousness, um, it cannot die. 
in the way that a body dies. It is not an object that can suffer decay and uh, in that way. But we are going to come to see this. I don't want to say so much, so that it seems as though I am making a lecture about it, because this satsang is to invite a living introspection, whereby we may come for our own self, to come into the experience of what it is that is really here, rather than simply imagined to be here. But as soon as the consciousness identify with the body, believe itself to be the body, then all the conditioning could uh, could enter through that door, and that is the birth of personhood. We start to believe, I am this body, I am a man, you are a woman, and such and such. I am so old, this is my age, this is where I go to school, these are the things I love. And all these descriptions are very much based upon the form, on the body. All the qualities we call ourselves is based upon the body. And we speak very little else, except perhaps our interests. I like doing this, I like doing that, and so on. Coming from a statement from personality. So the consciousness has in some way created a self-portrait of itself as a person. And it is living in the mode of the person. It believes very strongly that it is a person. And, and that is the fact of it. There is no more to it than that. The more you can go is just to become a better person. But, or a great person. And that is the scope of uh, the personal consciousness. You see? But when consciousness is um, uh, contracted in such a limited state as personhood offers, you see, although to the person it seems a very wide field, you see, then the person begins to experience and uh, and uh, the taste of uh, existence and the, the, the variety of tastes we can taste. But at some point, hmm, uh, things begin to not go to plan. Our dreams begin to crash, our projections fail, our health is failing, different things happen, you lose a friend, a relationship breaks up, or whatever it is. And we feel that we have entered into states of despair and gloom and so on. But at a higher level, these states are important to us, because um, there is so much potential within the human mode to break out or to evolve into higher states of consciousness. And it will not do it based upon chocolate-flavoured experiencing. Sometimes it's painful experiences, disappointments, crashes and so on, you know, trigger or stimulate the consciousness to aspire for higher states of consciousness. And that is the birth of spirituality. The yearning to move to higher ground, to safer ground, to, to, to um, an uninterrupted peace, unbroken happiness, a life that does not end in the earth, or in the fire, or in the belly of worms, a life that is everlasting. And in the human community, sometimes we believe, but these people are simply fantasizing, there is no such thing. When the body is finished, that is the end of you. Uh, the birth of spirituality is a yearning that that leaves just the land or the domain of personhood and move into the field of presence. Presence is the field whereby you are conscious and you are conscious of your consciousness. Okay? Let me just talk a little bit just about this. Supposing someone came, some being just appeared as a result of your prayer. You say, I want the eyes, I want the eyes. And a being appear to you and say, My love, I am the highest being in the universe. I have heard your prayers, hmm? and I have come to answer them. You see, all that you see in the world that you could desire, including everything, everything you see, I can give this to you in exchange for your consciousness. Would it be a good deal? Everything, everything I give to you, in exchange for your consciousness, of what value would it be? Because without consciousness, you could not perceive, you could not evaluate, you could not know, you could not taste, you could not have. None of these things would be there. 
The conversation couldn't even be there. The being could not even say to you, I'll give you these. Who is it speaking to? Consciousness. But perhaps consciousness with a strong desire to have and to possess and to rule and to be something. When the consciousness have such intense desires, it is not left the kingdom of personhood yet. You see? So your question, coming back to that, you say, I would like to make that transition from personhood into presence completely. Uh, because right now, um, I feel like I'm a cocktail between the two of them. Which means that I have the sense that I'm presence, but I also have the inclination towards person. Yeah? So yesterday, I believe, I was given the example that if you imagine that there's a snake in the room and you want to get it out of the room, nobody's safe. So it's leaving now. And somebody says, OK, he's in the garden. But someone says, yes, but his tail is still in the room. Is the snake out of the room? The head is in the garden, but the tail is in the room. Are we safe? No. It has to go completely out. This is what you're speaking. Somehow, my sadhana, my spiritual efforts, have brought me into the realm more of beingness, and I'm enjoying beingness. It's much more spacious. I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm just full of joy and peace. But sometimes I mess it up because I'm back in my person mind, and the person is fearful and selfish, and prone to feelings of despair and 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 uh, and all of this. I want to completely cross over. My head is in the beingness. My tail is in the person. Help me to cross over completely. Is it like that you're asking? Okay. How to do it? First of all, the consciousness, unlike the body, does it have a shape? You see, the, 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 the snake idea is a nice metaphor. It has a head and it moves over here, it's moving over, the head is moving in, but the tail is still, still in the room of personhood. Okay? So it's a, it's a good enough example. Um, so what makes you feel that there is still the person, the person, as there's still some personhood left to be pulled into the presence, to be dissolved, to be absorbed in presence? Please help me with this crossing over, you see? Mm. There is something else that we have not spoken about. And that is that there is a space of perception in which both the, the sense of presence and the sense of person are perceived. Are you with me on this? Because you spoke about it. You say, I am sometimes uh, I'm a bit of a mix between uh, uh, presence and person. So something must be aware of that. That which is aware of the measure of presence and person, is that part of the is that part of that shape? Is that part of that? That which is observing, to say that uh, you know I'm mostly in, into presence, and maybe I'm a third into person, for instance. Help me to cross over. Who is speaking? Who is requesting this? These are subtle things. Somehow you are brought into this field of inquiry, because you have the capacity to comprehend or to assimilate the words. But the mind also has some resistance. It also has some dirt. And that dirt is going to make some cloudiness. And we are here for clarity. So if we are going to work through this, you are going to see how you are going to become clear about it. You see? Something is saying, I am three-quarter presence or so, mostly presence, but I'm still person, and my person caused trouble. Please help me to be fully presence. Who is speaking this? Is it the presence or the person or something else? Very subtle, is it? And the one who is asking this question, is it really you? How are you going to answer this question? You see? 
is the one asking the question, who is making the request. Is this one also perceivable? Can we? Can I ask that? That hmm? is that one also perceivable, like like the 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 the, the quantity of presence and the quantity of person is seen or sensed. You see, because these are not objects. We are sensing that there is much more predominating. There is a sense of presence, but also the presence yeah, yeah, sometimes comes and spoils the show. You know, get get rid of the person now. That one who is asking, please help me to cross over. Is this one also what pure consciousness? Is it the person? Is it consciousness? Is it the mixture that's asking? This has to become clear for us. Hmm? It has to become clear. What is requesting this? Okay, okay. So uh, the answer came. It must be the person who is requesting this, because the absolute cannot have this kind of question. Why would the absolute be asking, "Help me to cross over from what to what"? <coughs> you say the mixture. I would like to break it down. The absolute. When we speak of absolute, I'm not going to speak much about absolute because I can't speak about absolute much. You can only be that. You cannot talk about it and describe it. Okay, that absolute, which is our our self, our our totally truthful self, is what is referred to the absolute. But yet, in the field of knowing, nobody knows it in that way. We can come into it somehow into our realization. Nobody can study it because the one study it is perceived in it. The absolute manifested itself as consciousness, as the dynamic consciousness, that which enables us to taste diversity, to have the sense of experiencing otherness. Okay? The absolute is not particularly experiencing otherness. It is the dynamic consciousness which manifests in the body by announcing itself in the form I am. Everyone feels I am, which means I exist. Am means to be. Who is the I that is? Who is the I that am? That I is consciousness. I consciousness am. And it is said, as I said yesterday to some people, that I am is also a name of God. So the godly principle is announcing itself in the body. I am. I am here. Who is this I? Is it a person? And yet from this I amness, this field of knowingness, extends itself further into the possibility of identifying with the body and the conditioning that it, the body is raised in, and then feel, I am this person. It is from the I am, this extension came, I am this person. My name is George, my name is uh, Silvana, my name is whatever it is, come from that. Now, the I am is not Silvana, it is not George. It is infinitely broader. It, it is not a male or female, it is just consciousness, the fluid consciousness. You followed like this, okay? The I am itself has the capacity to observe or to witness the named one, the sense of identity. It has the ability to observe it. So when we ask, so who, who, who is asking for help? To say, help me to cross over fully. Uh, you may say, <coughs> It is the, the intelligence of the being or something, or something that has identity in it, or knows of identity, believes identity, and feels that identity, and say, can I, can I, can I move more fully? Can you help me to move more fully into this? Very subtle. Don't go to sleep. 
It's just about now, you may start to feel tired. And that will be coming from that more lethargic state, which is the, the state within ourselves that tends to sabotage your drive for freedom. The mind, or some start to say, oh, it's a bit complicated, and all this type of stuff. No, it is perceived to be complicated, but it's now being thawed out and seen in a clear light. So that as you are seeing, you are seeing from being, and not just from your head's imagination. You are feeling what you are seeing. And that understanding must come, because it is a light that is going to guide you. You say, help me to cross over. You know? Help me to cross over. And I am putting it, that this one who is asking for help to cross over, hmm? like that. I asked you, is this one, your true voice, is it yourself? That one and its request to cross over are also perceivable, isn't it? <coughs> can, we, uh, can I have a sense that we understand? It's also even very subtle, it's perceivable like this. Something asking, something is asking this question. Something is feeling, I am this person who needs to do this. Maybe you've never asked, maybe it has never come this way, because you are also this, but you are not completely this. You are also in this. You are also in this body, tasting through the senses, thinking, imagining. Because your consciousness and the person is also a form of consciousness, although it is limited. But it arises out of a wider field of consciousness. Huh? So it does the movement from person to presence from personal consciousness to universal consciousness. You have tasted this universal consciousness. And so something inside is yearning to be completely the universal consciousness, isn't it? That which perceives all of this, the request or the squeeze of personhood, the urge to come out of it, the yearning to to, to, to be more fully in a place of uh, equanimity and peace and silence. Mm -hmm. That which is aware of all of this, the yearning for freedom and so on, mm -hmm. where is this? That which perceives even the yearning for freedom. Where is location? Finding its location is finding yourself. It is you who are perceiving all of this. When we identify as a person, when you identify as a person, you restrict your view to the, to the mode of personhood. It stays within, you don't look. And therefore, if you can just throw your attention on this, the vast majority of human beings, what are we working for? What are we striving for? What are we working for? Often we are working to obtain things which are perishable. Would you agree? Things that, we, that don't last. Which is not a bad thing that things don't last. But when you think that they will do, because you want them so much, then this is another delusion. The nature of everything phenomenal is that it is subject to change. And even if it does not change, your mood towards it may change. Something is always moving. The life is always flowing. And there is an awareness of this flowing life. Is this awareness that perceives life as a series of ongoing changes, is that awareness also changing? What knows that to answer so quickly? Eh? I know. I know. How you can know unless you are it? How you can know? You didn't think about it. You didn't even meditate about it. Because immediately the answer came from you, from your intelligence, from your seeing place 
from the fact of your presence, this response came. Now, from the place where this, this I know place, okay, does the problem still exist? Help me to cross over more into presence. No. But there is a habit. Habit. Uh, are you your habit? No. Hmm? Your habit will continue to affect the expression of your uh, dynamic life. The habit will affect the expression of your dynamic life, your moods and so on, hmm? in the dynamic life. No? I have just been pointing you to your source, to the source from where the dynamic life emerged. And that source is sentient, meaning that the capacity to perceive the dynamic life functioning is right there in the source. The person is not aware of the source. The person is not functioning consciously from source. The, the person is mostly concerned about personhood, personhood life, what I'm going to do tomorrow, how I'm going to feed my children, how I want to get a better job, and so on. The pure self is not concerned about that. So the self not being concerned about that, yet still functioning in a body, what's going to happen? Does it mean that the body is going to fall down and get really horrible and then you're going to be begging on the street and you're just going to just die on the pavement or what? The realization of the self as we are pointing to that which cannot be described, that which cannot be described, okay? Knowing that as one's own self, and only that can know that, actually, then just that is going to bless every other aspect or facet of your expression, of its expression. So that automatically, your life as your dynamic expression is infused with grace. It's infused with wisdom, with intelligence and love and peace and joy. You don't have to develop these qualities as qualities. They are the perfume of the being. All good qualities manifest spontaneously in the awakened mind. Have I gone too fast? What I have spoken needs some marination time. We are going to have to marinate in it. How is that? That somehow, when something strong is perceived in you, sometimes you just have to sit. If something beautiful has happened to you, and the first thing you do is you run and tell all your friends and send emails and Facebook about it, that's one type of reaction. But when something has hit you deep inside, like a revelation, you tend to become quiet. It's like speechless even. And something just wants to allow that to keep marinating inside. It's like a natural self-respect. It's like you have met God. And you're not going to be in a hurry to put it on Facebook. It's a different kind of thing. You become quiet, and you reflect on this, and you reflect on it. Yes. You see what happened to you right now? This. You know what this is? It is a sign of release also from certain trapped energies or stale concepts coming out. This is a natural thing that happened. And it's contagious. <laughs> and what happens is many people never understood these things. See what? Many people never understood these things. I remember when I was going to church with my family, we go there and, you know, 
And people, stop it. Stop it. Go to bed early. They don't understand that it is grace manifesting, actually, and alleviating uh, stored up you know, tiredness and uh, negative concepts. That is one of the ways in which they exit, or they diminish, or they dissipate. Just when you wanted to know, you missed it. Yeah, this is the play of mind also. You see? Just as I was about to say something, it goes, sausages, huh? Where is it? And then and you're gone, basically. It happens all the time. <laughs> eh? I don't know if I can repeat what I say. You see, all ideas that were not consistent with the truth, half truths, they are being burnt, burped out. Look, it's not that she's bored. <laughs> It's okay, let it happen. Let it happen. Yeah. There are times also when very strong, very strong, um, trapped energies, unexpressed things, you know, come out through coughing. Much more coughing, vigorous coughing can happen like that. It's not our aim. This is just byproduct of your satsang. No? Uh, that, uh, from where this arises, that cannot yawn. It's indescribable. It's indescribable, you see. Mm. It's like you, someone asks you, let's go and look at what's in the centre of the onion. You start to peel away. All the layers you're peeling away, peeling away. You say, almost there, we're almost there. Almost there, the last layer. And there's what's there. Nothing. Hmm? This is a kind of no thing, something, kind of nothing. <laughs> the experience of it, you see. And the experience of it is not different from it. It is experiencing itself. Free from the psychological noise of personhood, it delights in itself. It delights in contemplating itself in its fullness, in its full joy. You see? Even these tears coming is not you. You see? Even the tears coming, they are coming as a as a response, maybe, you know, from deep down, some is it tears of sadness? No. No. You see? Actually, I'm happy. 
actually very happy. We are used to it. You know, sometimes people are just laughing, 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 and, and crying, 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 crying. And people say, you know, should, is there some psychotherapist in the room? I said, no, 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 no. This one is quite okay. Noise and voice, it doesn't exist. It does not exist. Please tell them what you mean. Tell them what you mean, it doesn't exist. It's just not there. I just believe it's there, but it's not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But something still is yeah. afraid. Something is still afraid. Ah, cha cha. Mm. You identify what a thing is that's afraid? No. Mm. I see it. Yeah. Sometimes I might identify, but it's seen. I see it. Yeah. Mm. These feelings of fear come, and uh, they are very effective, because what they seem to be able to do is to bring you back into personhood, because it is the person who is afraid. The consciousness is not afraid. You follow? The consciousness is not afraid. What is it to be afraid of? Hmm? But the person is afraid of many things, because the person has uh, attachments to, to things, and we don't want anything to come that may threaten our attachments. You see? Attachment can be to, maybe to our body, or to, to someone you love, or it doesn't have to be a person, it can be to an ideology, or a kind of, uh, uh, a kind of wishful thinking, or or something, something feels that it may threaten, is threatening your, um, your attachments or your identity or something like this. Hmm? And like this, it brings, it brings, it's kind of reforming the person, it wants to reform the person so that you are functioning like a person. And the person is, uh, in a sense, the weakest link in consciousness. It is also consciousness, but it is the weakest link. It means that if you come back into the role of personhood, having experienced the greater consciousness, the freer consciousness, then you feel again contracted into a state, and it becomes even more unbearable. And this unbearableness of personhood is your way out, because it means you will not be able to tolerate it. And when you are not be able to tolerate something, then something has to change. Either it is going to destroy you, or it's going to vanish. The two can't live together anymore. You understand? Like that. So this is happening naturally through your meditations, through your inquiry, through your introspections, through your sitting in satsang. It's like a piece of ice in a glass of warm water. There's a melting taking place. So the sense of the person is just melting back. The person, the ice is water. And the water is ice. You see? So this piece of ice is water. But it took a shape which is not its constitutional nature. And now it's coming back to its natural state, which is fluidity. Now it can flow. You see? But all of this is fine. Every experience tasted is fine. Especially tasted and understood inside the heart. When, when I say understood, I don't mean that understood in some informational way, but knowing who you are. If you know who you are, then you are not going to be afraid of things. You know that you are experiencing through the phenomenal body, and perceiving mostly the phenomenal world in an emotional way, or a mental way, or a physical way. But the root of all of this is what you are. That's not a belief now. It becomes your experience, authentic. The fear, I ask you, is there a message in the fear? Is it a fear about something? And uh, is it? It's actually just the fear of death. Of death. But there's no message. It's not serious. Mm -hmm. It's just coming. How do you get how do you how do you get past the fear of death? Hmm? Because uh, mostly we have a feeling fear of fear of dying. Hmm? What feels the fear of dying 
is the one who has a life. The person who based their identity in the body, knowing that the body is a time body and one day will be gone. That is the fear of death. In other ways, throughout your day, we are experiencing many mini deaths. Deaths of ideas, deaths of relationship, deaths of a certain way of being, deaths of so many things are falling away. We don't mind, they are quite healthy deaths. Some of them you really want to get rid of quick. It's a kind of death, it's a passing away of something. But the big death, oh, it's like, you know, the finishing of the body. Is the finishing of the body the finishing of you? Well, it depends on who you take yourself to be. So the way to overcome this fear is again to go back, come back. And we can do this right now, actually. Would you? Uh, yesterday, um, in Satsang, at uh, the yoga festival, was it yesterday? Yes. Yesterday. Um, uh, I was inviting someone. I say, listen, you, we want to meet. You say, you want to meet, we want to meet. Uh, yes, come into my room, but before you come in, yeah, leave your identity and your stories outside. Just leave them out there and come in. <laughs> you understand? Okay? You, we're coming in because I don't want the story, I don't want your story. And I don't want to know about your, your history and what you want in life and so on. This is going to be a unique meeting. I only want to meet you, not your story. So just leave your story, leave your mind, eh? leave your identity outside and come in. How long will I have to wait now? Who can do it? Who can do it? Hmm? But let's just try it like say, yeah, we can do it. Because you can turn away from things, so basically, just leaving aside all your the usual questions you will have and the stories you will tell and the, and the, the exciting things that's happened to you and so on, leave all this, everything, you know, including your past and your ideas about the future and what you like to do in your life and who you take yourself to be. Can we just leave all this for a moment? Do you think we can try? Uh, we can try. Yes. Okay. So just we leave it. So like that's leaving it outside. Just leave it aside. Leave it. After the exercise that we are about to participate in, after the exercise is finished, which is just a few minutes, you can take your stuff back. Okay? You just say stuff, and they will just jump back. They will say it's okay. But now they are not included. We don't need them for this part. So leave everything. All your programs and ideas and yes, what I want and so on and so on. And even what I want from this interaction right now, I hope it's going to turn out to be like ding Buddha, you know something. No, even this, leave this, leave everything, become totally quiet, empty of intention and of uh, any concepts, no favorite concepts. Just leave everything aside. Okay. Yeah. Including your 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 ideas about I, your I, I, me person. Leave also that. Don't pick up any new concepts. And and don't be waiting. Don't you know also be aware of this. Okay, now now what's going to happen? No. So don't engage about any waiting. So, so there is just what is. You're not constructing something, you're not making up or imagining anything. We don't need imagination also. Just a sober, sober. Leave everything. So totally effortless. Totally effortless now. Nothing nothing to push, nothing to pull, nothing to keep. Nothing, nothing. Nothing to save. Mm. All is good. Like this. Mm. Stay with my voice. 
Leave everything you want now. Mm-hmm. What is here now? What is here now, just by itself, not being kept, not, not being held. Okay. Okay. What is just here? Just a, an isness. Do not be distracted. Even you. What is here? You don't have to say. You can. We can bring him to me if you want. Yeah. Okay. What is here? It's fine. Okay. Any troubles? Any pressures? Anything missing of value? Hmm? Look. <laughs> it just is. It just is. Is there something impatient you want to get out from this space? <laughs> I can't like, get out. It's me. You cannot get out. It is you. This start. Where is the beginning of this? Where can it end? Who can possess it? Have a date of birth, a star sign. Does it have a problem? Does it get angry? This, this is yourself. This is yourself, not your person, but yourself. Unborn. Imperishable. Unconquerable. Limitless. Unchanging. Complete. Imageless, formless, ageless, timeless. (coughs) 
no one can keep it. Because there's no one there. There's no possessor. It has no enemies, nor friends. It alone exists. It is this that manifests itself as the feeling I am in the body. And this I amness, it is the child of the Absolute. It came here to taste the sense of diversity, of transformation and change, to play in the circus of interrelated opposites, to enjoy and to suffer, to lose and to find, to give and to take. to live and to die, though it is imperishable. It wants to taste what is perishable. It is you. This is what your mind has been put here, to tempt you to run away from yourself, to run away from this self-discovery, to run away from your beauty, from your transcendental nature. Yeah. But it can only postpone, it cannot do it, because the fact is already established. You are the timeless one, dreaming of time. marinate in this understanding, this discovering, this joy that nothing in the world can give you, the joy of your own Self, the light of your own Self, who is without arrogance, without cynicism, without need, without fear. Yes. Satisfy yourself. Embracing this understanding inside your heart. Yes. Mm. Move in life in your natural way. Yeah. Keep your attention on the sense of being. Mm. Yes. Keep your attention on the sense of being and bear witness to the glory of God. <laughs> to the magnificence of life, to the truth of being. Be a witness to the dance of creation. (laughs) 
Every human being stands a chance of awakening to their immortality. But everyone must go through the river of tears. Yes. Yeah. You must feel the the ups and downs, the rights and wrongs, the good and bad, the bitter and sweet, success and failure. All this was to build spiritual muscle and to strengthen the power of your discernment, so that you will know what is real and what is unreal, and that you may choose the real. Sometimes, for a while, we postpone this, because we are fascinated with the unreal. We are in love with the momentary. And this is fine too. Everything is fine. Only the one who is ready, that one will wake up. Because to the divine principle, nothing is lost if we sleep on. We may cause pain to ourselves and others, until your pain that we give to each other becomes unbearable. Then we will choose what is right. When what is right, is all the choice you have left. Then alone will man choose righteousness. But you are already here. And this day is your day. This is your chance. Great is your life. I want you to just to sit with this for a moment. You can sit down for a moment. And, uh, just rest in this space of being. Sometimes it occurred that your mind would not allow you that space, simply to be. It would label it as a waste of time, or that it is boring, or valueless. But now you can see. Rest in that which doesn't demand anything of you, at least taste. It is not in conflict with life. It gives life to life. But you must also know your stillness, your peace, your emptiness. When you are one with the Source, then the world of changes will not harm you. Everything is only like a cloud floating by in the infinite sky. You are only the weakness. 
This weakness is already filled with joy. He is not searching for joy. It imparts joy to other things. See how it is to rest without waiting. To love without need. To be happy without stories. If anything comes up, don't suppress. Let it also float by. Don't co-join. Don't combine yourself with anything that you see or perceive or imagine. Simply notice. Stay with your being. Don't lock yourself in. In fact, take off your doors, your windows and your walls, and be in the open expanse of the infinite. Nothing threatens you here. Be grateful for the body and for the senses and for the the ability to experience, to use your mind, to discern, even to desire. But don't cling. Things will come to you. There's nothing to, no need really to pursue, unless pursuing is simply an urge within you, a joy, and whatever its fruits, you are fine with it. Your heart is the light of this world. Don't let the mind hide it. And at the same time, don't go about showing it. Just be. Just be. Just be. Those that came here in this very place before you, came in search of this. Came in search of the peace that you are now experiencing. The joy that is inside your heart. Say, my love, what is it? Should we give her a It's coming or something. Pass it on. I will obey and keep quiet, but I have to thank you. I have to thank you. I have to thank you. I thank you. It's nothing but thankfulness. I cannot tell. 
I, I keep quiet. I would like to talk, but I, I, you asked me to keep quiet. Talk if you want. Take this. May I go on? Yes, go on. Then. My heart, I tried so much to be happy my whole life, and nothing worked really. And now I cannot describe it. It is like like spring in my heart, like a light coming, uh, coming alive. Be, um, like I would like, <laughs> if I could, I would like dance and sing the whole day, but my head is half gone. Yeah, I'm running you, around You can here. do that. Well, <laughs> You're in the perfect place for that type of thing. Well, later on. <laughs> but uh, running around, I cannot count any longer these rupees here, which are not any, that we don't get, I do not care. And, and finding, don't find my shoes after the satsang, running around with, without shoes, and then I, everybody's seeking the shoes in these shops, and then I register they are not there. Well, but I feel so, it's such a relief, I can't tell you. And it's such a hope that that will go on and that it cannot be, um, that it cannot be, um, I, um, um, uh, what to say? Um, come to an end? Um, mm. Come to an end, uh, yeah. destroy or disturb by, by me, disturb by me. Yes. Well, why don't we take a look now? <coughs> well, we're in the best place to look now, yes. Well, if you Yeah. Because we are here together, we can look. That mm. which is, that you are now, you are not near to it. It's distanceless. You yes. are it. Yes. You are it. So you are the one who can say, can it fade? Can it go away? No, never. No, it cannot go away. No. Mm. No. And yet the mind will come. Yes, I know. And he will say, I experience that this yes, is yes. suffering. But it does not go away. Maybe your attention goes somewhere. Yes. And it appears as though this has gone away. And um. it's so much beauty around me, and I'm attracted to all these things going around uh, shopping or uh, eating delicious things, <laughs> whatsoever. Always I can observe attention is going, yeah. but not. Forever. Yeah. And, and, and this questioning, I have a questioning, I have a question questioning. Um, I have the impression as if I, I would like to ask a lot of questions, but as soon as I observe this tendency to ask again a question, it, is, it feels for me as if it is a distraction. Mm. It, it carries me away. Then this is how you you exercise your powers of discernment by simply making a choice and then leave it. Can asking this question improve upon the silence that is mm -hmm. already here? Can it improve upon the peace that is already in your heart? You know. Or is it just another bogus question to take your attention back into the field of noise? You see? Yes, it's, it feels sometimes as if I would like to show uh, that I'm able to ask question, intelligent questions, or, yeah, or yeah. as if it would. And I, I know I, this mind will not be satisfied by the answer. I want to be the answer. Yes. I but, want to uh, be. Yes, but only if you pick up that question then you want to be. If you don't touch the question, you already are. I am, yes. Don't you see how it is like this? You touch a question, yes. I, you know, if I do this, then maybe I'll get back to where I should be. But if you don't touch the question, you are where you are. You're going to love to continue looking and just becoming more and more subtle and confirming, you see, your place each time. 
Because mind is going to come the psychological side of the mind. I'm not talking about the practical use of mind, the practical function of mind. The sages continue to use practical use of mind, but the psychological mind, where in which which is bringing up constantly the sense of yourself as a person. Mm. This you don't need, but you will determine when you need it anymore or not. Yes. Because each time it brings up some doubts about that which you already are. And you think, well, why would you, unless somehow you are attached to this habit, hmm? or the attention is attached to this habit, something? Go no further. Yes, I like to stop here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good. When you're here, when you're truly here, all your questions will dry up. We have met. Where we are one. Remain one with this silence within your own self. Your mind wants to take you into the marketplace of concepts, but delight yourself in yourself. This is true self-respect, true self-love. Marinate, grow in inner strength, Are you content? Because rare is it that we go and see so many human beings sitting together in such serenity. If you were here only in your person, there would be more anxiety, more uneasiness, more watching each other to gauge how we should be. But now you are sitting inside your own heart, at one with your own presence. It is not a personal thing, it is a very universal thing. So as we are coming to the end of our stay, our visit here now, you'll find that as you as you get up and move back into where wherever your steps take you, your mind will remain in your heart. Yeah. If it feels that 
you, you're being pulled out, just take a moment, sit by yourself and look again and confirm that is not true. I'm just here. I'm just here. So be with it. Be with it. Acknowledge it. Respect it. Enjoy it. Love it. Be it. And we are here for another uh, two weeks at Rishikesh at uh, Swami Swatanjananda's ashram. And uh, for those of you who have not visited and you would like to come, you are most welcome. It is totally free to come. And uh, I would like to, um, I feel to leave you with a little treat um, that is very much connected with the life here in those days. And so I'm going to call some. Uh, are you ready? Something? Water, 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 water. In the meantime, while we're doing this, again, in respect to Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and uh, all his devotees who came to live and to express and to uh, have a place where they could uh, um, experience his form of transcendental meditation. And also for um, the for Pradi, uh, Pradi, I would like to just to again ex- express our gratitude. Who is the executive director of the um, Rishikesh Arts and Music Fest- Film Festival? And Raju is a forage ranger. We met when we came here. We both met. We met them both, and were shown around along with. Uh, um, some of the people working here. And it's been beautiful that after all these years, we have a chance to come and to sit in such a way and to sit in stillness here. And that uh, this initiative to keep, to open again the gates of the ashram so that visitors can come uh, here, that we, we are very happy for that. Very good. Huh? Thank you so much, you know. We're going to listen to some music now. Shades of love are drifting through my open ears, inciting and inviting me. Limitless and dying love, which shines around me like a million suns, it goes me on and on across the universe. Is gonna change my world. Nothing's gonna change my world. 
whose heart beats for freedom, for liberation from the psychological hypnosis of conditioning, and whose heart yearn for freedom. May each and every one come to the complete realization of the Self in the heart, and be timelessly happy and free. May your path be bright, your light clear. And may all who meet you on the way of life be so inspired and so touched by your presence and your light, your peace and joy, your wisdom, your silence and openness, that they are inspired and compelled to search within themselves to find the light that they perceive in you, and so also find liberation in this life, in this world. Let it be so, let it be so. Om Shanti, 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 Alleluia, Amen. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Shri Mahesh Yogi Baba Ki, Ramana Ki. Papa Ji Ki, Shri Buddha Ki, Shri Krishna Ki, Shri Christ Ki, Shri Ananda Mahima Ki, Shri Yogi Ram Surat Kumar Ki, Shri Mahadev Ki Ki, Shri Ram Ki, Shri Ganga Ki, Sahaja Ki.